Sports with John Schaefer. We are Iowa Sports. Yeah, it should be a great night out here. And again, it's Military Appreciation Night. We have the Iowa National Guard who's going to be out here tonight firing off this big puppy. And I'm going to give you a preview of what that's going to sound like. Go ahead and hit it. Wow. Woo! That, that might clear an eardrum out. How are you? And welcome to another podcast by George. Well, we're going to continue with my friends or my talented friends. So I know so many people that have got skills and abilities uh, that I don't have. And this guy's uh, got a couple that I'm very envious of. Uh, this is John Schaefer. And John is, um, well, first known to me as a hockey player. He's, he's on my men's league team. Uh, great defenseman, a great high school player and um, moved on uh, to broadcasting, and I'm connected to him kind of by his dad. His dad's a local broadcasting legend in the heartland here in central Iowa, and and now he's doing uh, television sports. So let me start off here by reading this uh, bio, and then we'll get to it. Des Moines native John Schaefer joined the Local 5 team in October of 2014 as sports director. John brings an emphasis on storytelling. God, we can't get enough of that, and that's kind of what this podcast is about. High energy highlights and a love of sports to Local 5. It says it isn't rare to see him out shooting sports events, talking with fans, players, and coaches to find those stories that mean so much to viewers. Uh, John started his career in Bismarck, North Dakota as a news reporter at the CBS affiliate KXMB back in June 2012. He made the move over to the weekend sports anchor and reporter five months later, and after one and a half years on the weekend sports desk, John became the sports director, and it wasn't long before... He saw an opportunity back in his hometown at WI. And before getting his first job, uh, John graduated from the University of North Dakota with a degree in communication. He was part of the school station Studio One, where he learned the basics of shooting, editing, and storytelling while in school. He also got his pilot's license. Now, that's cool. I mean, that's <laughs> interesting. And so here we get to the hockey stuff. From the first time John got on skates at the age of three, He's loved the game of hockey. Growing up in Des Moines, he learned to golf on the rolling hills of Waveland. He played multiple sports for the Des Moines Roosevelt uh, High School, including baseball and soccer. He still remains active in sports to this day. And it says here in conclusion, when John isn't out shooting sports or working hard to put together story ideas that give you a look into the great people of Iowa who make up the sports community, you can find him on the golf course at a hockey arena maybe playing in a game with me, or spending time enjoying all that uh, Des Moines has to offer with his uh, beautiful and lovely wife, Jenna. So, John, welcome to a podcast by George. Thanks, George. Happy to be on here today. Yeah, we're glad to have you. And I, I don't know, I, people uh, sometimes ask me how I got started in broadcasting, and I say, I don't know, there's always kind of that frozen moment in time uh, for everyone. With me, um, I was a small, uh, I mean, I might've been five, six years old. My dad had a business and he took me to a, to KWKY, okay. uh, yeah, radio station that's actually known, it's, it's historic as far as radio stations are concerned. If you look it up on Google, you'll, you'll see why. We're not going to get into that. But anyway, <laughs> he took me out there. There was a guy named uh, Irish Davis, a disc jockey doing country western music. We went into the radio station, and I mean, this was back in the day, folks. This is a long time ago. There's a big, I think it might have been a wood-burning potbelly stove in the <laughs> middle of the uh, station there. And here's Irish Davis sitting there and I remember my dad told me the one don't make a sound don't you say anything don't you do anything you sit quietly and don't make a noise you know and I watched that and I don't know I was kind of bitten with it uh, from then on and so that that was how I that was my first exposure with broadcasting your first exposure with broadcasting was a family event I mean yeah, you I grew mean, up in this yeah right? dad working for KIOA all those years yeah. when I was younger I remember going in on like Christmas Eve and taping the Christmas morning show with dad and mom and my little brother and stuff and just having a blast around the radio side of this business and something special always and and I actually when I decided to go into the communications major I called my dad and Maxwell was just like hey I, I think I want to get into radio he said well you're coming home <laughs> 
<laughs> I said, I said, no, I'm not. What What do you mean? He goes, you're coming home if you're getting into radio. You can do that without finishing up. And I said, well, I like college too much, and I like North Dakota too much. And uh, I was dating my now wife. And so I said, you know what? Let's check out the TV route. I was, of course, uh, studying aviation prior to this, so that's where the pilot's oh. license comes in. Oh, and yeah. Wanted to be an airline pilot for a hot second, and, and then the rest was history. You know, I... I liked radio. I was never as successful in as your dad is an example. Like I said, I mean, he's a, a, an Iowa broadcasting legend. Here's a little bit of his show. This is how you start the weekend. Maxwell and Friends on News Radio 1040 WHO. You want to sip something that makes you feel all warm inside? Well, take a drink of this coming up here. We have a very special guest in the studio. Not a lot of you may know about the history of prohibition in, in this state and uh, the bootlegging operations that are part of the uh, of Iowa's history, specifically Carroll County. Uh, and there's a great story here. Um, I, I, it wasn't that I wasn't good at it. I, I thought I was pretty good at it. Man, I just couldn't survive. I mean, I just had to get out. I couldn't make a living. I it's mean, It's a I, grind. Yeah, it, it was It is tough. a grind, yeah. So you took the television. Now, see, I got a radio face. So I, I was stuck in radio, yeah. but you went the television Thankfully, I, w- I was gifted with a better looking face than my father. <laughs> <laughs> my, I got my, I got my mom's looks. Yeah, yeah, I got my mom's looks, so yeah. we're good there. And, yeah. um, you know, television, it, w- it was just being around sports growing up and everything. It, it was kind of a natural fit for me and being in North Dakota, great hockey school. And so got to cover some hockey up there too yeah. and just grew an affinity for it. So it was a great time. You know... I wouldn't want to misrepresent that or get people confused. Now you are, you're a very good hockey player, an excellent <laughs> high school hockey player. Right. You didn't go to North Dakota. No. To, I mean, they got some hockey players I, up there. I, if I yeah. was up there to play hockey, I would not be in Des Moines, <laughs> yeah. Iowa, working in yeah. news broadcasting. No, but um, did some intramural sports up there, intramural hockey and that kind of stuff. And you've got a bunch of former NAHL guys that played the high level intramurals up there that I was competing with, and it was just a good time. You know, more than anything, I, I realized my hockey career was kind of at an end after senior year with the Capitals and uh school is where i wanted wanted to take my next adventure off to and that was north dakota so now how'd you end up there why uh one of the best aviation schools in the country oh. actually uh first off if, if anything goes wrong it's flat so if you need to land you can literally land anywhere sure <laughs> um, no fences no, no trees nothing to get in the way <laughs> the only the only trees are planted in a row to break the wind in the yeah. winter so um if you like ne- if you like the weather we're having here in iowa right now you'll love north dakota yeah, yeah. it's very tropical this time of yeah day. sure it is um but no, North Dakota was a great school, and honestly, small campus had a great feel to it. Um, and again, going into the Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, you want to see the oh, mecca yeah. of hockey in general. That's it. Yeah. So, was uh, just enjoyed my time up there. Spent yeah. five years up there after the major change, and uh, a lot of good things came out. Is of Ralph it. Engelstad still alive? No, he no. passed away years ago, okay. uh, unfortunately, and we didn't, we no longer have the Fighting Sioux name up there. As oh, well, yeah. we're the Fighting Hawks now. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. still have my suit. It, I, yeah. I still have my suit jersey hanging in the closet. Uh, break yeah. it out every once in a Good while, Lord. but that's a that's a different topic yeah. for a different day, right? Well, that that's a beautiful arena. Anklestead, yeah. that that dude owned a casino. Yeah, in he, Vegas. he used to I've own. Been there. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, what was it? The I can't think. It was downtown. It was not. It, uh, it, yeah. it was right on the strip. He had yeah. uh, Imperial Palace. There you go. Yeah, and I actually I had the I, I stayed there a few years back and probably was a little nicer back when he owned it and, yeah. and all that but uh yeah i mean really just an insane hockey arena leather seats every, every seat's day. leather they have two beer gardens yeah. at each end of the rink and um it's sold out every every weekend and i think it didn't it used to have like the large longest contiguous bar or something like that they said because, probably because yeah. it ran around the mezzanine or something yeah I, something, I, something like something that strange it's, like it's that. crazy so so aviation yeah yeah how long how far did you take that I, I got my private pilot's license and uh, got halfway through my instrument ratings and my commercial ratings, and uh, so about two years in, I, I wasn't on the proper pace necessarily. I dumped a lot of money into it and realized that you know it just wasn't a lifestyle that I really wanted to continue to chase. I just enjoyed flying, to be honest. I just liked going up in my little single single engine plane and flying around and going podunk town to podunk town, and that was what I wanted to do, and so take it as a hobby i still have my private license and uh just gotta get my medical updated that kind of stuff nothing yeah. too crazy and then the switch to broadcasting yeah that was uh that was a little bit of a stunner for my parents you know you go to two years through aviation and you say you know what this is just isn't working for me and um yeah for with my dad i had to have a plan and that plan was already it's radio or tv and 
obviously radio was a quick no and the tv station up there studio one was a really great internship i got in right away and um just got my teeth got my feet wet right off the bat and started shooting learning how to storytell and that was a big thing for me is i just love connecting with people and sharing stories that are off the beaten path yeah. a little bit more than others now did you have a head start do you think because of your dad and the i way you grew up and- i'll be honest with you i it was i think that helped quite a bit i understood at least the vo- vo- vocal part of this business a little bit more and um he was always a great mentor for me i'd call him up and at least work on my voice tracking and that kind of stuff with him and uh just get that comfortable tone i mean you can always tell when people are reading versus just being themselves and, right and uh letting my personality hang out was the biggest thing i had that's to learn. huge yeah and people cannot underestimate that and of course your dad has got all of that <laughs> uh, he's involved yeah. involved in theater also yeah he yeah. does theater at the playhouse he directs plays my mom writes plays yeah. she does stuff there my brother uh, right after high school, left for New York City, became an actor, uh, worked for Disney Cruise Lines for a few years. And um, so I come from a very theatrical family. And so I, I get to put a little bit of that to use here, too. Yeah. You know, I flash back and I think about, um, you know, I also, I'm a sports guy. I was interested in sports. I would love to have done that. I got involved, believe it or not, I started off as a disc jockey and then I moved <laughs> into what I was actually trained to do, which was news. Mm hmm. But everybody loves sports. But when I was involved in it, there were guys that were around doing sports since they invented the microphone. I mean, these guys started in early radio, yeah. and they transitioned to television, and they weren't letting go of it. Mm-mm. I mean, these guys hung on until, you know, the, the final The bitter bell. end, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you weren't getting those jobs. No. it's and To be honest, Des Moines hasn't changed that much in that sense either. I, I always looked at Des Moines as a 5-, 10-year plan down the road at – Bismarck someplace else than Des Moines and um, just kind of fell into my lap a little bit to an extent we've seen a little bit of turnover here at five and uh, one thing led to another and I just was very blessed to get where I am and uh, be in this spot so I don't know you're you're doing well (laughs) you look to me like you're on a fast track how old are you now I am I just turned 30 last week yeah I mean that ain't too bad face of an 18 year old though yeah (laughs) but at 30 years uh, I mean you're moving on up this sounds good so what would you consider to be some of the highlights thus far? I mean, it, of their career, yeah. I, um, I'll be honest with you. I I anchored a, a weekend newscast with Will Farrell uh, sure. in Bismarck, North Dakota. He was coming, came through for the promotional tour for Anchorman Two, and he <laughs> he anchored a newscast at our station uh, on a weekend. And so, so I, did he do it in character? Yeah, he did it in character. So were you the straight he, guy? How'd that I, work? He was he was Ron Burgundy, and he anchored it with our female weekend anchor. And then I did my sports cast and you know he oh, he did his like, shtick and that kind of thing so I, it was fun for me i ran some hockey highlights and, and a hockey fight and you know his big rebuttal was i've never seen fighting in hockey before that was fascinating and, <laughs> and you know so just it was it was really fun to experience that that had to be the biggest highlight of my career but you know just the places i've gotten to explore and go to you know I, i've been all over the country now with this job i've gotten to sit sit in the press box for a rose bowl and um, Tampa, Florida for the Outback Bowls. And it's it's been an experience, that's for sure. It's been a, a lot of ups, not too many downs, and just all over the place. Well, y- you know, that really is kind of the allure of it. Like I mentioned, there are guys that they're willing to sacrifice a lot to do it. There's a lot of travel. There's a lot of late nights. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of downside to it. But even me, I got to um, – I mean, I was in the locker room in the Stanley Cup playoffs in Chicago Stadium with uh, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, that, that um, I was in a room with Muhammad Ali. You know, I mean, That's crazy. those are things that they can't take away from you. You never forget. And you got to kind of balance those things. Yeah. But then, when I look back on it, what do I talk about? I talk about those things. Right. And you, you've got to have the support staff. You, you've got to have the spouse there the the significant other that's going to support you through this i couldn't do any of this without my wife and, right. um and so it's that's that's a big part of it too because like you said we do spend a lot of time away from family this is this job isn't just showing up and reading a sports cast i'm in two o'clock putting stories together shoot out shooting things very few dinner breaks during the week and you know a lot of weekends too and and i've been again very fortunate to not have to work a weekend shift longer than a couple of years but um you know i'm still working saturdays covering football and that kind of thing and my wife's at home with our baby and taking care of her so it's it's got to be a great partnership there too otherwise you just don't have that balance in life 
Now, is that ability to shoot, is, is that, uh, you know, an, an asset for you as opposed to some other people, or do, does everybody in your role uh, have that ability now? Most people in our roles do that. I mean, most yeah. sports guys are one-man bands uh, in the sense that we shoot, edit, write, you know, produce, all that stuff. You have to um, until you get into those really, really big markets where you've got a producer set up for you. You have a videographer that's going to go out and get the stuff for you, and, um, you know, you got to work your way up to that that place and i'm fine with that i i actually love going out and shooting that's that's one of my favorite parts of this job yeah. is standing out in the freezing cold shooting an iowa state drake game in miserable weather is a highlight for me and and just being on the field for those experiences yeah. or on the court and um watching an upset of kansas or iowa take down michigan you know those are big moments for me and so that's that's an aspect i don't want to lose in this business too well, Des Moines considered it used to be considered a small to medium market as far as television is concerned. But as far as college sports is concerned, it's a major market. I yeah. mean, with the teams that we have here, it didn't get any better than right. what we have it, here. It's a little bit of a hidden gem in the sports world. And uh, you said it, we're a mid mid-sized market, 72 out of like 230 something in the country. And um, we get some of the best AAA ba uh, baseball. We've got AHL hockey, and then you add in Iowa State, Iowa, college athletics, high school athletics still gets a great emphasis here too. Um, you cannot ask for a better sports market than this because you get into the Minneapolis's or the Chicago's of the world. You're competing with ESPN on a nightly basis mm -hmm. to cover the same teams and access that they're getting for you. So you've got to differentiate yourself in that aspect too. But here we've just been so lucky to have the great sports teams that we have. Now, television sports coverage in these local markets has changed quite a bit. When, uh, back in my day, again, going back to the, you know, the gray beard stuff, yeah. when they're drawn uh, there wasn't it on much rocks, local right? sports coverage at all. No. I, I mean, they might have a scroll on the high school games, maybe, you know, yeah. of what the scores were, but that was it. That's changed now. The, the paradigm, as they say, <laughs> is shifting. There's a huge emphasis on uh, local yeah. high school Hyper, hyper localization is a big thing and that's what we consider it as hyper localization where you really stick to a certain area you know because no one else is really covering them you, newspapers get over there here or there but no one's getting them highlights and there's nothing more exciting than when you see a high school kid tweet at you or, or get on facebook and say just watch my highlight you know on channel five or local five tonight on the blitz or you know, Friday night hoops, that kind of stuff. And and that's special to me because it, it's making an, an impact on them. They get a spotlight that they typically don't get. What do you consider to be, um, I don't know, one of your strengths? I, again, going back to my day, that mm -hmm. I grew up in the local market, so I understood it. I had a head start over guys that were coming in from out of town that maybe right. never got a grasp on the local community. In the news business, <laughs> I'm sure you get from point A to point B. <laughs> I mean, I could get there before, you know, the fire truck sometimes, right. you know, and would make for a pretty good story. Then I had the ability to, and this is what jumped out uh, t at me in your bio, that storytelling element of it. I was able to, you know, they call it paint a word picture, whatever you want to call it, but yeah. if you opened up a Mike and and put me there I, I could be first you know, accuracy might be in question once in a while <laughs> but I could it, you would know what was going on based on my ability to yeah, describe it so storytelling yeah I mean that's big it is and uh doing it in a timely manner too we only get a couple minutes to really t share these stories so it's got to be effective it's got to be well done and well written and um and so that's what we do and uh it's just it's been a, an interesting aspect of just working in that capacity of doing that and, and really fine-tuning my writing. That's But being in Des Moines helps, too, because I have access. I, I know people. I've got connections. And um, I've established myself now over the last four years as somebody that's reliable and, and courteous and a people person. And that's yeah. what I pride myself on. Now, how do you uh, view studio work as opposed to field work? How do you feel about the two things? Uh, both are fun. I love being live on location. I also love being in the studio some days. It just depends on what's going on you know if it's the uh nhl game then i'll go live out there down at uh wells fargo arena or next week state wrestling i'll be down there live a couple nights i love that atmosphere it's just a little bit more off the cuff a little bit more freelance and um whereas in studios a little bit more calculated yeah well that's all great you know I, and i and I, I can't think of you and i can't look at you without thinking about your old man and i suppose you get that all the time now he's kind of winding it up he's getting yeah you know he's n not quite as old as me i don't think but he's close to it mm -hmm. and you're just you're just getting it going yeah now, what's he think about all this he he loves it i mean he i mean he goes proud dad moments all the time and it's kind of been surreal lately because he started up his show and uh over there at who and so i'll call in and he'll talk to me about sports and 
we'll do the lowdown in the professional thing. And it's just kind of, it's a different dynamic than maybe that's what cool. we're used to. Yeah. You I mean, know, that's way cool. it's two yeah. generations I mean, in the one place. You God, know? I would love to have done that. I mean, I never did anything. I worked in my dad's business with him a little bit. He took great pride in my ability to operate some heavy machinery and stuff like that. I remember sitting at a blackjack table with him in Las Vegas. That was kind of a father son right. moment, you know, cause he was the one that taught me how to play and he really liked the gambles. <laughs> I, that was more him than me, but right. you know, those things were kind of cool, but you're, you're on the air with your dad. And so know, let's check uh, that nepotism out. Nepotism is alive and well here on Maxwell and Friends. <laughs> because when I want to talk about sports, and particularly the NFL playoffs, I got to call my son, who just happens to be the sports director at We Are Iowa, Channel 5. Hey, John, how are you, buddy? Good morning, Maxwell and Friends. How's it going? Do it all right. How, how are things up in Ankeny this morning? Uh, a little snowy, not too bad. Just got to shovel it out, and then uh, should be good to go. All right, NFL playoffs. Uh, so some unexpected, a little turn of events last week, and uh, one or one. What, yeah, he's throwing it to you for the sports stuff. They yeah. still call that show Maxwell in the morning, or what do they call it, it over there? Uh, so at HO, they've changed it to uh, Maxwell and Friends, and it's a three-hour okay. Saturday morning show. You know, uh, with the transition out of uh, the the old radio station and moving over to iHeart Group, it's been an interesting change for him, obviously, and uh, but he's loving it. I, I think that's a big thing, and it's been a good move for him. That's great. Yeah, I, I I can't say enough how much uh, you know. He he goes proud dad. I you know nepotism's alive and well on that morning show for him. He always opens with that, and and I'm good with it. You know, I, I've taken so much away from him, and and honestly, wouldn't be here without yeah. what he's guided me through. So. You know, and I listen to you. I got the headphones on right now. You've got more of a, a deeper uh, a baritone type of. A, you've got more of an old school broadcast voice than your dad does. <laughs> yeah. Your dad actually. Um, you know, back when we first uh, started, everybody wanted to have that real low, ballsy, baritone voice, you know. <laughs> he didn't really have that, but it's really good for one category of work that he does in particular, and that's PA work. Yeah. He's the announcer for the Iowa Wild, and he's done the Bucks, and he's done a lot of PA work. Well, you got to have that, that little uh, high note, that edge in your voice, you know, to go with it, to cut through yeah. on a PA. I don't know what it is exactly, but if you're real bassy and low, uh, it, it, it mum- it's a, mum- it, it's a it, muddy thing. Yeah, yeah, it muddles up with that fan noise and the white noise in those arenas. But, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in Bucks Arena. We know, no offense to the Buccaneer Arena, but that PA system has never been great. Yeah. And he's always just found a way to get it rocking and, and really yeah. cut through everybody. And do you have any interest in that part of it? Do you I, to- I do. I, uh, I did some back in Bismarck for the uh, – juco up there for some basketball and then most recently i did a capitals oak leafs game which was pretty fun for the turkey yeah. cup and um you know it's it's a different side of things and it's definitely an art you got to find a balance there and he's done it for so long that it's just yeah. it's second nature to him nowadays what about play by play for you play by play is a totally different beast i love play by play um outside of hockey hockey play by play is such a different dynamic and um the guys that do it are so good at it and yeah. you've got to be on the fly you've got to know your yeah. stuff really well yeah. basketball football is a very different pace and i've done football i did football for uh our station in bismarck we do a friday night game of the week and uh broadcast that live and and football is a different pace but yeah. you know hockey i mean it, yeah you got 20 met, guys to worry about i met dan kelly <laughs> I mean, the great Dan Kelly. I mean, right. the guy that uh, did all of those. Uh, he did the Bobby Orr ca- call. You know, he's out of St. Louis. They interviewed him one time, and they asked him, like you said, um, God, this looks hard to do. Uh, do you, are you looking at numbers? Do you, how do you tell these players apart? And he just did it by their skating, just by the way, because he'd seen them so often. Yeah. That was his life. You know, and he could call those players, all those players in the NHL, with, without even looking at, at numbers. But it's not easy. For the Bruins, tied up by Ecclestone and Berenson. Westfall rolled it in front. Sanderson tried a shot that was wide and keen and cleared it, but not off. Bobby Orr behind the net to Sanderson. Orr! Dan Kelly. Now his son um, uh, calls the St. Louis Blues, and he's okay. great. But boy, not like the like not like the old man. Man, no. God, God, he was great. So, yeah. you, have you done color on hockey? I've done color on hockey. So, uh, NAHL team up in Bismarck, the Bobcats. We did some of their games, and of course, we'd just pull their radio guy over to do the play by play. And I did color for it. Um, again, you just got to be on top of your stuff. And I like the color aspect of things just because I can give a little bit more analysis and that type of thing. So with my experience, I mean, obviously I didn't take it beyond high school, but I know enough to get through that. And, Makes and, a difference. Right. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if you've played, I mean, it, it helps. Yeah, yeah. You First off, it's just one following the pacing of the game. 
understanding where to plug in and play and and so that's been the fun part for me is trying to find that again around here. And there isn't a ton of hockey broadcast that goes on. You know, uh, Ben Gislason and, and Joe O'Donnell with the Wild uh, and Ben with the Bucks both do a heck of a job. And one of the, I've done some color for the Wild here or there when they need some help. But, um, you know, it's such a busy job here at 5 that it's it's tough to find a Friday or Saturday where I am available like yeah. that. So. Well, that's great. I, yeah. I, you know, the podcast, it's all about, the, like I tell people, I haven't got much of the skill or talent, but God, <laughs> I know some people that do, and that's great to be able to interview you and talk about the day and your dad and all that stuff. That's the reason I do these podcasts, folks. I mean, this, for me, this is just an eye-watering moment. This is really great. <laughs> now you're a teammate of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Just and Throwing we're, your stretch passes left and right. Yeah, there. I'm trying to I'm trying to get in there and score a goal or two and help out as we try to get in here for the uh, – uh, playoffs for men's God, you're a nice add to the team. Glad that we were able to. <laughs> I mean, that, that helps a lot to be able to bring you on. What's next for the career now? What What do you Where do you see yourself going? Or do you even worry about that? Or just take it, you know, like it, a hockey player, just game to game, you know? Game, I mean, game to game for me. Yeah. You know, right now I'm happy in Des Moines. Uh, got a great situation going on here at, at Channel Five, and um, really just kind of taking it day by day. That's all I can do. And uh, you know, there are big goals down the road, but. Nothing that I'm are in immediate need of right now. It's you keep an eye on the places you want to go, and um, it's all about timing. That's the big thing. Is if if I can't dictate when a position opens up someplace else, and uh, so I, I'm just gonna stick with this for now, and and yeah. really keep developing what I'm doing here at Channel Five and uh, the brand that we have, and just continue to grow on that. You know that we are Iowa brand. I couldn't be more proud to say that just because I grew up here in Des Moines and. Uh, I love sharing stories. Like I, I, I know I. It sounds <laughs> fake, but I love sharing stories. They're pretty around good this on morning. the bench, let me tell you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, and and some of the people you meet in this business are just bar none, best people yeah. you'll find. And and Iowans are like that. And I think that's the big thing is staying around the Upper Midwest. Is it's a special place. You know, you leave long enough and you realize. Des Moines is a great place to be and um you don't really want to go anywhere outside of this area just because the people are great yeah that's well said that's a great way to end it too that's my pal that's my friend and that's John Schaefer we are Iowa local five television sports on another podcast by George